So I'm gonna be honest, I didn't really know a whole lot about this artist before deciding to listen to this record, but I did decide to listen to her older stuff before I took a look at this to be kind of fair to see what she had sounded like or if she had always sounded like this, as Maggie Lindemann, Lindemann is out with her debut album Sucker Punch, and from what I've heard and what I did hear from stuff that wasn't on this record, she always tended to mix pop punk in with a lot of her music but never really fully like she never went with it it was just a lot of pop mixed with this that and the other but on this record it strictly seems to be just pop punk and it's very interesting it's 15 tracks and i gotta say it has this weird kind of combination of like current blink 182 and current Bring Me the Horizon, like, there is actually some heavy moments and some electronic moments that make you think, oh, yeah, this definitely sounds like, like a Bring Me the Horizon riff or something like that, and there's definitely some moments, especially the more kind of, you know, like, pop-punk chuggy moments or that little, you know, beat that they do in the background now for these pop-punk songs that reminded me a lot of what Blink-182 just did on their most recent record, Nine. It's just... Very weird the similarities, but at the same point in time I can kind of understand maybe this is where her inspiration came from. The only song I didn't really like on the album was Break Me, which featured Sick Brain. I, I don't know what it was, I guess mainly because when you listen to that song over the others on this record, it just feels so out of place. Plus, it's definitely annoying. Not one of my favorites, and that's why it made my least favorite. Then when we get to the OK tracks, I mean, these are songs that I did like. She Knows It, Phases, You're Not Special, and Cages are better when it comes to, you know, Break Me as they do feel like they fit the album, but I wasn't having as much fun with them as, say, some of my favorites and all this kind of stuff. Then when we get to my favorite tracks, Take Me Nowhere, what a hell of a kickoff that is. It comes right after this kind of melodic intro and has kind of this, like, heavier drum beat to it. It's it's kind of like how Fall Out Boy started their album Infinity on High, where out of nowhere there's just these, like, metalcore kind of drums, and you're just like, whoa, wait a minute, where did this come from? That's kind of where this song, Take Me Nowhere, kind of starts. It starts with that, and you're just left going, whoa, I didn't expect it to be this heavy. I was expecting rock, but I wasn't expecting, like like this, and that's really the only song where you get the drums sounding like that, but nonetheless, it really just reels you in from the beginning, and it's a great job, a great song to follow up the intro. Casualty of Your Dreams, Self Sabotage, another one of my favorites, even though some people may say it sounds boring in some cases, I do like Self Sabotage, the lyrics and all that are pretty cool, and it's just catchy as hell. I'm So Lonely Without You, Girl Next Door, We Never Even Dated is another one that's kind of you know, like Break Me, the oddball on the record, because it's more acoustic, but again, I feel like with the way it goes with the rest of the album, fits the atmosphere, and it didn't feel out of place, and I don't know, Maggie's vocals just seem to flow very, very well. Novocaine was nice, too. I feel like that, again, catchy chorus. Hear Me Out, and How Could You Do This To Me, which features Kellen Quinn of Sleeping With Sirens fame, which, no offense, dude, but have your balls dropped yet? Because, like... I'm not a big Sleeping With Sirens fan, mainly because Kellen's voice does get annoying to me. There are some songs of theirs that I do enjoy, but not much. And it got to a point where it's his part in the song, but I wasn't able to tell because I'm like, oh wait, that's him. I thought Maggie was still singing. Well, um, I guess he still sounds the same after however many so years. Like, it just, it, he, he's in his mid-30s and he's still singing like that. It just, I don't know, I guess people have the certain way that they sing but you would feel like that he would try to tweak it over the years. Like, I'm not saying it needs to be deep or anything. I'm just saying he still sounds like a 12-year-old girl, and that, to me, is definitely not my thing, I guess you can say, when it comes to emo pop punk. Like, I'm okay with it being whiny, but you just... You, you don't sound the way you think you sound. Even when he does his screaming vocals, it's, like, laughable because he sounds like someone who's, like, getting picked on in school and he tries to tell him off, but 
his voice is just way too high when he yells, so no one's, like, intimidated by it. They're just laughing at him, like, like that kind of voice. But nonetheless, it didn't take the song down that much. I still like it because aside from that one verse and some backing vocals, he's not really there a whole bunch. Or, I mean, by a whole bunch, I mean, like, you would think he would be present more, but like I said, aside from the one verse and some backing vocals toward the end, he's not there. So, yeah, overall, I really do like this album. It is highly enjoyable. It is very weird to me to say that Maggie Lindman and Demi Lovato made better pop-punk albums than Avril Lavigne did. Like, it's just, it's weird, but at the same point in time, I like the fact that the influence has popped through and there are artists doing the job better than the artist who originated from there and I, I kind of thought with MGK starting this trend of artists switching genres to pop punk that all of them would kind of just be you know terrible in a way but when you actually have some talent it works and the problem with MGK was he had no talent but with Maggie Lindman she definitely has the voice for pop punk and the attitude for it and it fits her very well and I hope she continues down this path with her next release, whenever that may be. So, overall, this record gets an 8 out of 10. I would definitely recommend. It's been one of my favorites of the year so far. And, again, could potentially be on my top 10 albums of the year list. But we still have plenty more coming out that I plan on reviewing, so who knows? But you guys can tell me in the comments below what you thought of this record. And until then, stay safe out there. Wear your mask, get vaccinated, and I will catch you all in the next one.